Hello, my dear students. Welcome back to another video lessons. Today we will learn class 5 English on a topic The Wonderful Wall from chapter 10. So, my dear students, please take out your books and open page number 64. So, now, my dear students, let me give you a brief introduction about the author of the poem. The author of the poem is William Bright Durant and he was a British writer of children's literature and he is widely known as the Lurid of the nursery as he wrote many nursery rhymes and he is remembered for the verses that he wrote for the children. Okay, now the poem consists of four stanza. So I will explain you stanza wise accordingly. Okay, now let's begin the wonderful wall poem from the first stanza. Okay, now let's read out the first stanza line. Great, white, beautiful, wonderful wall with the wonderful water round your coat and the wonderful grass around your breast. Wall, you are beautifully dressed. So in the first stanza, the poet described the wall as a very beautiful place with water and grasses on it. So therefore, he says that the wall is very beautifully dressed. Now let's move to the second stanza. The second stanza lines let me read out. The wonderful air is over me and the wonderful wind is sucking the trees. It walks on the water and wheels the mills and talks to itself on the tops of the hills. In the second stanza, the poet described that the wonderful air and wind is sucking the trees and the word used for sucking is wheels, which means moving around very rapidly and quickly at the worldly movement. So, it moves around the mills above the hills and also on the water surfaces, which means air and wind is everywhere. Therefore, the air and wind have been described in the second stanza. Next, in the third stanza, let me read out. You friendly earth, how far do you go? With the wheat fields that nod and the rivers that flow with cities and gardens and cliffs and isles and people abound you for thousands of miles. Now in the third stanza, the poet have described the earth by the term friendly because they are wheat fields, rivers, cities, gardens, cliffs and isles. So therefore it is a very beautiful and friendly place that we can live with all the beautiful things of the nature. Now, the last and the fourth stanza of the poem, let me read out. Oh, you are so great and I am so small, I tremble to think of you, wall at all. And yet, when I said my prayers today, a whisper inside me seems to say, You are more than the earth, though you are such a dog, you can love and think, and the earth cannot. So in the last stanza, the poet distinguishes himself and the wall. He thinks that he feels very small compared to the wall, but when he prays to God, he heard a whisper in his ear, which tells him that no man is much more important above all because he has the quality to love and think, but the wall does not have the quality to love and think. And also it provides us all the beautiful things but feelings that we have above loving and thinking that only humans being have. Now this is according to the point concerned. So therefore he says that God has created us and he is concerned about men. So we are here residing in this world and sharing this beautiful world which describe as great white beautiful and wonderful world. So this is all about the poem. Now let me talk about the figure and speech used in this poem. Here in this poem in the very first danger you have 
you has been used to address the earth and which is a non-living thing therefore we can say that the poet personified the earth in this poem now what is personifications a figure of speech to a literary device used to attribute human quality to a non-living object and also we can analyze this poem that followed by the rhymes rhyming scheme so now what is rhyming scheme a rhyming scheme is a regular patterns of rhyming words at the end of each line in a poem so now my dear students in this poem the poet shows that how little and insignificant man is as compared with the world but man has the capacity to think and feel which makes sense superior to nature and then the title itself clearly express us the theme of the poem and then the poet describe the immense beauty of our mother earth the poet feels struck and experiencing and realizing the net the natural beauty of the earth but at the same time the poet feels insignificance and tiny against the large world and also at the same time somewhat relieved to realize that as a human being is greater than the earth so my dear students this is the end of the lesson for today thank you stay home and stay safe